Um, hey guys, this is Mary Ann again, and I just wanted to show you a video about the changes that I have made in my setup of the Filofax Safiano in personal size. I did put up a video about how I set it up the first time, but I've made a few changes on it, and I want to, to show you guys. So, here we have pretty much the same thing. Um... I don't really use the pocket very much because pockets don't work very well for me. If I tuck something in there that I have to deal with, I completely um, forget about it, even though it's on the list. Sometimes um, sometimes I need a little bit more prodding, like if it's on the list and then I don't see the receipt anywhere and then I panic and then, oh, where is it, where is it? And then I realize it's in the pocket after all and I just don't need that much. <laughs> I added stress in my life, although it's kind of funny. So what I do is, if it's something that I have to deal with, I punch holes in it and I put it here, in the relevant section. So in the other pockets, I just have uh, put the jot pads, <clears throat> so that if I need to pass a quick note to someone during a meeting or a conference, I don't have to open the rings. And then I have two new membership cards. This one is Starbucks, and this one is at my one of the bookstores that I go to and um, I'm, I, I've already ordered um, more credit card holders from Filofax so I'm just waiting for them in the mail so I can put all these and this is my patient card from uh, my uh, the American Eye Center so that's pretty much it there's still the knife and I still have my um, business cards on here pretty much the same <clears throat> so this is the fly leaf that uh, that came with the Filofax. This is the Holstein Manifesto. This was also in my first video and somebody was asking me where I got it from so I put the link in the comments page of that video. I really like this so I, I kept it here. Now I have changed my dividers. It used to be this. Well they are pretty. They 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 they, they kind of tend to look um, a little bit messy after a time and um, because of the glittery embossed I'm not sure if you guys can see but there's glitter embossing on them because of that effect look how thick they are here they are really really thick and they're using up a lot of, uh, of room on the ring so I made this. This is not really board, but it's it's paper that's a little bit stiffer than the usual, but it's not as thick as this. This I, I got it from this one. This is the jotter pad in the office. It, it, it was exclusively distributed by Star Paper Corporation. It's a local paper company in my in my country and um, this jotter pad is available in national bookstore for about 40 40 40 40 something pesos so that's like a dollar and it comes with really good creamy stiff but not very thick paper here I have uh, printed out lines on them so I can cut them down to size and turn them into note paper for myself and just to give you guys an idea about how thin it is compared to my other dividers, I have taken out 11 because I have 11 sections. See, if you compare it with this, that's, that's half. This is half as thick as this. So that works for me. And I kind of like the minimalistic um, design that I made. This one is the prayer stab. I just stuck a foil butterfly on there just to give a little bit of accent. And um, because I have moved this around, I have not redone the tabs yet. This is just um, sticker paper that I have pasted here. They're very easy to peel off. They don't peel off by themselves, but if you very carefully peel it off, it peels off without leaving a mark or without taking off the, the top part of the paper. So I'm going to redo the tabs once I have pretty much settled into this layout. <laughs> so this is the pairs tab. This did not change at all. I just moved the sections around a bit and the reason for that I will explain later. This is pretty much the same. 
there's a me tab I have combined me and finances because um, I, was confu I, I confused myself when I separated the two because in the me section I have all my IDs and account numbers but in the finances section I have my cash uh, envelope and I have my credit cards and ATM cards and my list of accounts so I, I, I ended up having two lists of accounts and so I just combined the two of them because they're pretty much the same me is is uh, there's a saying that goes tell me what your credit card is and I'll tell you who you are <laughs> it's just a little joke so that's me and finances there's the file of facts registration sheet my little business card that I hole punched this is my community tax certificate and these are my IDs I've combined them all my rewards cards and um, membership cards and debit cards this is my cash envelope I have posted a video about how I did this very same and this is the envelope that I did in the video uh, the only change that I made is that I I put a um, whole reinforcing patch on here and here so that's one two three four reinforcing patches and then I added a tab here so that I can easily, each time I have to pay for something, I just do that and I don't have to search for it anymore. I didn't want to leave it with cash. I just put a butterfly on there and then I know what that means. And this is the little envelope that I keep lottery tickets in. <laughs> this is something that I just thought out. Um, if I win the lottery, I'm going to buy a big house for myself, two apartment buildings to rent out, one car for me and another car for um, camping for off-road conditions and then I'm going to plant a lot of trees uh, there's just the two tree stickers but that only means that I have only two tree stickers left but that means also that I going I'm going to plant a lot of trees to compensate for all of the paper that I have used up in my life and will continue to use up so um but now that I have not won the lottery yet, I'm still going to continue planting a tree here, a tree there, you know, like, but if I do win the lottery, I'm going to buy an entire forest and plant trees. So, this is my car registration for the year. I'll put this here because my car is an absolute mess and if I put that there, I'm absolutely going to lose it. See, the final facts rings have gaps in them and this one is... It does not show a gap, but this one catches the most. That's my beef with this planner. And these are the account numbers that I have to... I don't use my credit cards anymore, but I still have payments left on them. So, um, every time I make a payment, I just copy the uh, card numbers from here. So, I don't have to bring the card anywhere. I, I have placed them in storage. And... These are the bank loans that I am paying off. Um, they're almost paid off, but I just want to monitor them now because I want to be sure that they are paid off exactly when I plan to pay them off. Everything will end um, within the year. Now, this is the fold-out that I made of the retirement that I'm expecting. This is not very sensitive because by law, I'm only allowed to, to get them when I'm 65. <laughs> But you know, I'm trying to um, I'm trying to track them. See here, I have I have put a little column. Like the goal is t for this value to increase every month or every year, and this value should decrease. This one should increase, decrease, decrease, decrease. So that's the goal. So that when I when I look through the values over time. I can see if I am achieving that goal. This is a helpful column to have and so far it's it's working out. And then I have the usual how to be a money magnet. This is also in the first video. And then I have my financial wish list. <clears throat> and then I have my capture pages. Just oh. This one is um, not yet filled out. I have put extra note paper in there. And these are my lists. I, this used to be labeled to deal with, but um, I renamed them lists, but I plan to rename it back to to deal with. 
This is a coupon that I want to avail of. I have until next week. It's 50% off on a new iPhone 5 case. And then just um, these are the loans that I have already been fully paid since last year. But they haven't updated me yet. And I, I'm trying to get refunds for them because there were overpayments. So these are for the overpayments of everything. So yay! And this is my task list, shopping list that don't have any particular deadline. And this one is, these one are tasks for my apartment, for my day job, and for my freelance work that have no deadlines. And this is a reference sheet for one of the refunds that I'm waiting for. And the, here's a statement of account for another refund that I'm waiting for. Just more task lists, to-do lists. To deal with see this is what I'm talking about I have to pay for this it's my electric bill I have to find this which I have not done yet because I have been trying to find it but I haven't found this yet it's the Midori travelers notebook pen holder which had one of the screws loose so the seller agreed to replace it but I have to send this back to them and I cannot find it I've been looking for this every couple of days in my drawers in the office but I can't find them so just more stuff to deal with now I have the calendar by the way I've also placed the emergency hotlines on here and <clears throat> this is the chronodex I've already put up videos about this how I did these pages, how I work with the chronodex. So you can just uh, go to that video. And I used to have a tracking section, but since that is also calendar based, I have I have done away with that section completely and I just put the tracking calendars here. This is for my 30 day challenge. This is for my Proust reading challenge and a couple of other trackings. These are the yearly goals that I'm trying to achieve and see this is a uh, an idea that I got from Clara or my summer touch she has an idea for a life tracker in the life tracker you list down all the years in which you have lived and you cross out each year as you live through them the purpose of this exercise is for us to always remember that we don't have a lot of time in the world we are not going to live forever so we have to have certain goals that are achievable within our lifetime see I have already crossed out 2012 but 2013 is not yet over but I have already turned 37 so um, once I turn 38 which is this week yay I'm gonna cross that out and in December 30 I'm gonna cross this out so it, it's it's a good thing to have goals, not just for the sake of having goals, but because it's it's for our own good. I mean, we cannot go through this life without doing something. So this is the purpose of this section. And I'm hopeful I have, I have plotted my life to last until I am 107. Um, I didn't want it to end at 99, you know, because the table will be lopsided and I'm OC about that, so... <laughs> I have um, I have plans to live up to 107 <laughs> and now here is the inspirational section I really like the movie author author and I have put here all ideas and um, inspirational stuff for my blog and for my writing I'm, I'm I'm working on this is these are the poems that I like and top 20 motivation hacks and I have some notes for a novel that I'm working on there's this quote again from HP Lovecraft on how to write a ghost story blog post ideas that I have to deal with some notes from Proust <coughs> ideas for YouTube videos everything that goes into uh, everything that has anything to do with writing and creative stuff I put here and this is my journal, just some notes on what I have to journal on, and um, uh, blank pages. If I run out, I still have a stack of these. What? I have a stack of these. It's off-white paper with lines printed on them, but if 
when I run out of them, I have the ivory once. And then this is the section for university. <clears throat> now, this is cute. This is a miniaturized facsimile that I made of the application letter that I sent to the dean. I wanted it to be here because in this letter I have explained to her why I should be allowed to enroll, what my plans are for my studies, and what I plan to contribute to the discourse. It's already been received. I've sent this last week, but it's just a reminder to me that I have to make good my promise to the dean. And I can still read it. See, I'm not sure if you see, it's still readable. On the camera, it's a little bit small, but if if it's off camera, if I'm the one reading it in person, I can still read it. And maybe it's also because I've practically memorized what I have written here. I've rewritten this like hundreds of times. So this is the task list for this is the task list for uh, my application for the the program that I'm applying for. As you can see, everything has already been done, and I have put down the dates on which I have accomplished them. And now there is just one task left, which is to take the admissions test. And just the application requirements is pretty much done. I've already sent that. And um, points to cover in the letter, which I've already done. And transmittals to my professors. And this is the label to the pouch that my dad sent me. Um, the pouch contained my original transcript of records for my bachelor's degree from my old university. Because my old university is like eight hours away and my dad lives there, so I asked him if he can be the one to request for an original copy of my transcript of records and send that to me because I need it to, for my application to my um, um, second master's degree. So he did that for me and he mailed it to me via LBC courier. And I, I, I was really happy when I got that and I was really happy that my dad did that for me. I mean like he has been doing things for me every day. but. This is really special because I really want this to I, I really want to be admitted to this program and I really want this degree. And this handwriting means a lot to me because when I was little I noticed that all of my gifts from Santa Claus had this handwriting on the label. It said to Annie because he had been a very good girl this year from Santa Claus. And I noticed that he had the same handwriting as my dad, so I told my mom. I said, Mom, did you know that Santa has the exact same handwriting as as dad? And I don't know if she said anything. I, I can't remember, but there's that. <laughs> I was 11 when I found out why. So this handwriting means a lot to me. So I'm putting it on here. And this is the checklist of the program. I have to take all of these and have to have papers for all of that. And this is the flow chart that I have to follow so I don't lose my way taking courses that I don't really need. And this is just the relevant information about my university. This is the academic calendar that I downloaded from the website and I printed it and cut it down to size bunch holes. The enrollment is on November 4th, so I have marked that down. And just old matriculation forms, and this is the tab for my day job. These are the, the office directory that I don't want to store in my phone. I don't call these people all the time, you know. I, I don't even, I don't call all of them, but in case I'm out of the office and I need to call them, I have their direct line numbers. And this is the tab for my son. <clears throat> so, um, I have moved the tabs around a bit, if you can see, I haven't really adjusted the, the tabs themselves, but I have moved the sections around a bit, and the reason is that I want the calendar to be in the middle. I want there to be, in the middle, I wanted to place sections that move around a lot, so that when I open the rings, I can easily take them out. If I put them on here or towards the back, things are going to pop out because this is a very stuffed planner. Now, 
if you can see, it's really, really fat. Let's measure that. It's like the pages themselves are an inch and a half thick. And the filofax itself is about two inches thick. And that's not very good for my rings. I am absolutely going to break my rings this way. But the size works for me. I've always been like an A5 girl or a Midori Traveler Snoop girl, which is essentially an A5 but narrower. See, this is A5, but A5 is up to here, I think. The Midori Traveler's Notebook is much narrower. But I was glad that I, I was, so far I was able to work with this, but it's kind of thick. I've tried to trim it down, but this is everything I need. These are the things that I look at more than once a day. So I need them to be here. So, um... I am in the market for a Franklin Covey with 1.5 inch rings and I've already ordered one off eBay and then another one with 1.25 inch rings and uh, I'm going to do the Joshua thing. <laughs> I'm going to try to swap the rings and see if I can come up with a binder that has 1.5 inch rings. The binder that I bought from Franklin Covery that has 1.5 inch rings is, has a zip closure which I'm not very crazy about because it makes the binder a lot bigger. And then the binder that I bought that has 1.25 inch rings is just the basic binder without, it's the open kind without any closure, no strap, no zip, no loop. So I'm going to, I, I plan to swap the rings from the zip one to the open binder. And if that doesn't work out, I'm just going to swap them back again and just use the zip binder because if you have a planner this thick, you're gonna have you're gonna need the extra security of the zip closure anyway. So <clears throat> I, I this is still holding up well. This hasn't broken down yet, but I, I I don't want to abuse it. I don't want to use things for which they were not really designed. I mean um, this binder is not designed to hold anything more than 23 millimeters worth of pages. So I want to be fair to this planner. I don't want to use it for something it was not designed for. So um, I, I'm going to wait for the Franklin Covey and see how that works out. So that's my update for today. Um, I hope I've given you some of the ideas, and thank you for watching. Until next time, bye!